All right, today's the day, and I guess the year is the year here, first episode of 2021. Um, looking at the project, what's going to be happening here? Well, hopefully we can step things up and move this thing along a little bit more rapidly this year. Um, the thing that we need to first start on is I need to get all the panels finished so that I can kind of uh, fit them together and get some measurements and check some calculations and make sure we got some fitment that is correct before we can uh, do some final assembly. So what we're gonna work on today, we are gonna finish the back panel, the bumper, whatever you wanna call it, so that we can fit that to the rear clamshell. And they take some measurements there and in the front to build our aluminum craft structure, which will be the mounting points to hold those components in place. And once we get those components held in place, then we can uh, adjust them for our final fitment, make sure we got our gaps looking good, that kind of thing. Anyway, let's go take a look at that rear bumper. Let's go see it. I'm pretty sure of the design of my front structure to hold the radiator and crash structure, that kind of thing, but I just want to verify some things by having these parts in place. Now you notice there's some gaps as well, but that's just a matter of things like this area not being trimmed enough to go down and to close that gap. But we can work on that once it's actually fixed, like the hinges mechanism that's going to lift this thing. So we're going to put, temporarily put it in place. I mean, it's pretty darn close to where it's going to be here but I need to get under here and make some measurements just so I can verify everything. Always good to verify something rather than just going off of uh, what you think. And just to make sure I was gonna throw this little lower quarter panel on to also get some measurements off the width. And once I got these things in, get some measurements, but the real thing, we need to jump to the tail end, go to the back bumper. That's what the topic of today is. So prepping that mold, we're gonna go ahead and wax it and put some releasing agent on it and then get our flashings. We always have to do our flashings just to create that little turn back to create our part with some structure to it for all the joints that can occur on this thing. Going around, I got some pretty tight bends on this thing and some pretty wild radiuses. Uh, that tight corner there, you see I put a C-clamp on it to suck it in nice and tight. Then going around with my paper cut clamps. Need a little bit of trim more there, get that thing to close up, got that going. As I'm gonna go around, get all our flashing on here. And once we get that on, it's again, of course, time to go back and do our fillet around the corners, get our nice little clean radius going around, seal the edge as well, so the resin doesn't go back behind the mold. Make it nice and clean. And I'm going to start off on our first layers here, and uh, I made a major error on this part in that I forgot and did not check my stock and did not have any of the fine cloth that I usually use on that first layer. So I switched and used... Uh, satin weave cloth which is uh, really hard to get the air to work through the weave is so tight that sometimes the air does not want to work through it but we're going to just do what we can here and take our time to try to work that air out get a squeegee and the roller even then though i did end up with some bubbles on the outside surface which is a not a disaster just more work for me and it's just a matter of working it as you can though so did our best we can now it's time to move on I got this first layer on before a friend's coming to help me uh, do some lamination. This is my friend, Craig. Craig, you've met before in another video. Craig's an aerospace engineer. Met him when I was in uh, San Diego living there. Craig was working for a company that was developing launch vehicles for satellites for the Navy. And just happens to be that we both ended up in the Southern Oregon. And now that he's close by, he's always telling me I should call on him if I needed an extra hand. So I took him up on it this time. Nice to have him on this project. I wanted to get this whole thing done, a little bit smaller part, knew I could do it in one, one run, but it would have been a six, seven hour job on my own. So he came over and we cut that time down to about three hours. So what we need to do here is uh, we're gonna get four layers on of the S glass cloth, the structural cloth. After we get those uh, four layers on, we're gonna change over and put in a couple of uh, Layers of Kevlar into this thing on these lower parts where you might uh, have things that come underneath the car and hit the lower parts. Anyway, as you'll notice here, getting the Kevlar cut and ready that I'm not able to use my electric shears. Having to use these ceramic coated uh, hand shears. Um, it all looks so easy with these uh, Kevlar cutters, but you ever cut the stuff, you know it is not. Here we are getting those uh, Kevlar layers laminated into position. 
And after that was done, put a couple more layers of uh, the S glass on top of that. You didn't see that, but here's the next day, gonna strip this thing down. It's all cured, ready to pop it off the mold. Again, just going in reverse, take all the clips and strip our flashing off. And once the flash is off, we can start trying to pull this part from the mold. It's a matter of uh, getting our plastic wedges, chisel in there, start peeling this thing loose. And everything came off real nice and easily, except for those uh, protrusions, what do you want to call the vent holes that come out the back. Being there and trapped, the only way to do this is uh, put the wedge under there, put some pressure on it, then you can go around and tap on the part itself and break the bond. And uh, you can't hit it so hard you fracture the fiberglass, but just enough that it all seems to pop loose. And there it goes, loose and out of the mold. Now this thing's pretty complete. I'm gonna trim it up. Not a final, final trim, but just a rough trim so that we don't have all that jagged edge hanging on. And it won't be so much of a problem in the way as the only thing I have left to do to laminate onto this thing is uh, we will be putting some hard points onto it and some uh, little structural corners and uh, things to add parts. Add parts meaning we'll have some uh, attachment points for like tail lights, things like that. And like I said the hard points for uh, mounting this thing to our structure underneath. And the reason we jumped to Finishing this part up is because, like we said, we want to throw this onto the vehicle a temporary trial fit so that we can get some measurements for verifying our aluminum structure is going to attach to the subframe and hold this thing in position, have the hinge points as well for the clamshell on top. So once it's trimmed up, we're going to swing it over, get a few clamps. Like I said, temporarily hold the thing in position and I'll be able to... Uh, Go in there and get some measurements. There it is, ready to uh, do our verification and move on. Oh, well, there you go. The rear bumper is temporarily fit. Now I can get in there and get some measurements, get those rear crash structure, those mounting points all built so that I can um, put those a little more permanently in there and start fitting things. We also have other episodes coming up in we will be introducing the secret project, the another project we're going to be working on simultaneously here. And I promise that will not detract from here. The Arite supercar project. I will continue to try to get you a video every Thursday on the Arite, but look forward to the other project that's going to be coming up. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today and we will see you again soon.